Manchester United 2, Newcastle 0. And the first trophy of the season goes to Manchester United in a game which I think they thoroughly deserve to win. I think they had the better tactics on the day. I think their players executed the plan perfectly. And ultimately, Newcastle just got done by the better team. And um, I know it's sad to say because I know it's been a while since you've been in the final. And I know you guys are really looking forward to it. You could tell from the fans in the stadium, you guys were amazing today. But however, just got done by the better team. And let's start with Man United. It's been five years since they last won a trophy. And the last one was under Mourinho. It's been a while and you could definitely sense that Man United fans definitely wanted this. It was, it's only the Carabao Cup and I know it's only the Carabao Cup and you guys know it's only the Carabao Cup. However, for Eric Ten Hag to get his first trophy in his first full season, I think it's a huge boost for him. I think this relieves a little bit of the pressure. Not massively because I think Louis van Gaal got sacked after winning the FA Cup and Mourinho won several trophies and got fired. But... I think this definitely relieves a little bit of the pressure. To get it in your very first season it was incredible. I mean, you could tell from the size he was picking. He was playing a strong team towards the back end of this competition because he really wanted to win it. And I think this game was won in the press conference. And I've seen some people talk about the fact that Eric Ten Hag mentioned Newcastle's ball in play uh, possession stats because it's definitely been a thing this season. It's kind of gone under the radar. And by talking about it openly before the game, Ayrton Hag put pressure on Newcastle and he said to them, right, you guys have been basically been shit houses. you're not keeping the ball in play, you're slowing the play down as much as possible and no one's been aware of it, but he was aware of it and he brought it up and subconsciously Newcastle played into their hands, they were on the front foot, they were dominating the game, Man and I were just sitting back and soaking it up because Newcastle were trying to be on the front foot and that's, that's what they do sometimes, but they're more defensively solid first and playing through the line slower but they really went at them especially with Alan St. Maximin down the left hand side running against Dallow who got a very early yellow card and you kind of thought oh that's going to be that's going to be a worry for Dallow and Man United because he's going to struggle and that didn't seem to become an issue and there was a couple of chances I mean for the ball across the box which no one got to Alex and Maximin with the tricky feet and he had the wonderful shot but then David De Gea just stuck an arm out and he got to it and I thought Newcastle could do something here but it was all to Man United's plan and they just sat back, absorbed the pressure and they did amazingly well and in the end Casemiro, I mean the guy is world class, we all knew he was world class but I think me and some other fans in England were a bit sceptical because of the fact that he's coming to Man United for a lot of money from Spain, is he going to adapt? He adapted perfectly fine. And not only that defensively, but offensively. The amount of goals he scored this season, it's been incredible. And he is, United needed a centre defensive midfielder for so long. And it's crying out. And it's so obvious to everyone to see, apart from the transfer negotiation team and the Glazers, who didn't want to put the money in. But you signed Casemiro and the difference he makes to that team. That team is so much different. And he gets a wonderful head, a lovely ball, uh, left footed uh, curling free kick in from Luke Shaw, who's... Had a wonderful season himself. I know he didn't have a great uh, World Cup and people were getting on. But for Man United this season, he hasn't let them down. And Malice here, Paul Malice is on the bench. I thought he'd take his place. But every time he's had the competition, Luke Shaw stepped up. And he stepped up again. Wonderful free kick. Casemiro, lovely header. And there's nothing that uh, Karius could have done. And I feel bad for Karius because there's nothing he could have done for either of his goals. I mean, maybe the second one we'll get on to. It was just a long... F- goal kick from David De Gea and this kind of ones and twos and fights fighting is a bit loose and then Weghorst gets the ball, plays in Rashford who's in red hot form at the moment, gets a bit of a deflection of Bodman, I think he gets a goal in the end as well but maybe Karius could have done better if he was playing a few more games, maybe he would have stayed a bit more upright and could have palmed it away, he got a, f- a couple of fingers on it but Marcus Rashford, that man again just there's no stopping him, absolutely no stopping him and he gets his goal, well almost gets his goal, own goal, but he has his hand in the goal and Newcastle were really, really sh- struggling to get chances because that whole first half was Newcastle had 60% possession, they had 7 shots, but then compared that to Man United who had 40% of the possession, 5 shots and 5 on target. And that was a, that was a whole game. Man United were working the goalkeeper much more than Newcastle were. If you look at the end of the game, Newcastle had 15 shots, but only two were on target. I mean, one was say maximum. I can't even remember the other one, but honestly, that was they needed to test David De Gea a bit more. He's a world-class goalkeeper, and 
he's shown it recently because he's been in outstanding form, but you need to work him a bit more. I actually thought Jacob Murphy tested, well, was getting in, involved in the game a lot more um, in the second half when he came on for the same maximum, but he's taking a couple of shots here and there, but trying to square up the United defence and then taking a shot, but Man United was so much better. I mean, I've got it. 14 shots, 9 on target. Worked the keeper, and they've got their chances, and they did really, really well. They probably should have been disappointed when they didn't score as many as they did. 30% possession in the end of the game, and like I said, it played perfectly into what Eric Ten Hag said in his press conference. Newcastle United played on the front foot, tried to attack, and then United just countered them and did so so effectively. It was in transitions every time that Newcastle were getting done, and just fell into the trap. And maybe lack of experience in that Newcastle United side, apart from maybe Kieran Trippier. And then if you look at that Man United team, the likes of David De Gea, Rafael Varane, I mean. Uh, Lisandro Martinez has won with Argentina in the World Cup. You've got Casemiro, Champions Leagues, however many Champions Leagues. That team is filled with winners. And now, now that they've won one, I know, again, and I know it's only the Carabao Cup, but now that they've won one, it's hopefully it's a springboard for them because under Eric Ten Hag, this United team is so, so exciting. And five years, five long years, I think it's the longest United have gone without a trophy in 40 odd years, well before Sir Alex Ferguson. And it's about time because under Eric Ten Hag, you can definitely see the future for this United side being so, so bright. You can definitely see them going in the right direction. And now, I mean, third in the Premier League and, you know, if if they keep winning games, they might find themselves in the title race. And if they do, great. If not, that's okay. And Europa League, they're playing Real Betis now. I mean, you expect them to get through having just beaten Barcelona. And who knows, that could be another opportunity for another trophy. Still in the FA Cup as well. Quadruple is on. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do it. But, you know, you, there's so much to be excited about the United side. If you think about the players you didn't even get on. I mean, you've got the likes of Garnacho, Anthony Martial. I mean, the players you did come on. Sabitza for Fred. Um, who Fred was on a yellow. I think that was a great decision to make, take Fred off. And then, oh, at, at half time, bringing off Diego Dallo and bringing on Juan Bissaka. And I thought maybe give Dallow maybe 10-15 minutes to see how the game pans out. If he makes a risky foul, maybe maybe then you bring on wan -Bissaka. But Ayrton Hag is so proactive. He brought, brings on wan -Bissaka at halftime. And then wan -Bissaka just bosses him maximum. And honestly, that whole right-hand side, he just owns him. And no one can get down it. To the point where Newcastle are chasing the game in the second half. Late in the second half as well. I think 80 or minutes. And uh, I think someone got um, one of the midfielders got the ball on the left-hand side in that half space, and they looked to the left, and there was no one apart from Wambasaka because he just had the whole area locked down. He was absolutely incredible, and I thought Weghorst also incredible. I mean, he's been getting a lot of stick because he hasn't scored many goals, but and I know there's this whole thing of he should be scoring more goals because he's a striker, but I think the modern-day striker they need to have the all-round game, and if they can score goals too, then you know. That's a bonus. And then all of a sudden they're a world-class striker. But he enables the players behind him to play their football and play their football to their best. Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Anthony, who also thought was amazing. Wegos gets the assist for the Rashford goal as well. And the fact that they just used him as a springboard, and I know that's not his natural game, and he's also got amazing feet, but all round he just linked up the play so well for Man United, and it was such a great out ball for them. Anthony, like I just mentioned, Coming on against Barcelona, he did amazingly. And then today as well, I mean, just running against Dan Byrne, he had him on touch. And some of that Brazilian flair as well was amazing to see. Casemiro, Fred, Verana, Martinez. I think the defence for Man United has been outstanding this season. And I think we all owe Martinez a bit of an apology for the beginning of the season. We weren't maybe all saying it, but we all definitely had our doubts about him. And the United partnership at the back, has just been so solid and there's no one absolutely no one who's been able to get through and make him look like chumps after the first two games against Brighton and Brentford since then solid so so solid and I think going forward United can use this as a catalyst because I think Eric Ten Hag says all the right things and he plays football the right way and he's got his visions that you can see from his Ajax team and the way he wants his Man United team to play going forward and they're not too far away they aren't too far away. Maybe a bit more squad depth. Uh, maybe in the midfield areas. All of a sudden, if you look at the wide areas, which was an issue going into the season, 
you've now got Rashford, Anthony, Sancho and Garnacho. And you've still got the likes of Palestri on loan, Amadialo on loan. The wider is a great. It, more midfielders as a backup because I think Casemiro and Bruno, 100%. You've got Ericsson to come back when he's injured. Maybe next season it might be the case now. Fred is much improved. Still question marks over Scott McTominay. Uh, McTominay. Maybe makes a bit so permanent. Maybe. In defence, I think if... If Martinez and Varane are injured, then you know Luke Shaw step has been stepping in. Malassi has come in, but really want to keep Luke Shaw a left back. I think Maguire and Lindelof maybe aren't good enough, but this United side are really, really, really good, and honestly, they're quite they're quite fun to watch. You know, and it's hard for me to say as a Liverpool fan, but credit where credit is due, Man United definitely deserve to win this game. And do you know what? They probably won't even celebrate too hard because they've got a game midweek now and then they've got another game on the weekend and back to Europe. So, games are plenty and I think that definitely helped Man United because Newcastle, the sudden dip in form was in the last six games leading up to this and they had the whole week to prepare. And maybe it psychologically impacted them because they had the whole week to think about it. Whereas United playing midweek, playing Barcelona on Thursday night and having that high, maybe they were just like, they didn't have enough time to think about it and get worried and stressed about it so that's why maybe they perform so well but regardless I mean Man United thoroughly deserved it they've been the best team in this competition so far Ayrton Hag what a manager you guys have got and you know back him whoever the owners are whether the Qatar owner is going to come in or whether it's still the Glazers back Eric Ten Hag because he's going to lead you places you know and I think this is the first time where you can say with David Moyes, it never kind of felt right. With Louis Van Gaal, it kind of felt like a bit dull and boring. With David Moyes, no one's been the perfect fit for Man United. And I think Eric Ten Hag is the perfect fit for Man United. And the first time since, since Sir Alex Ferguson, where even as an outsider, I can say, yeah, he's a Man United manager. And oh, it's just, yeah, enjoy tonight, Man United fans. You thoroughly, thoroughly deserve it. And going forward, Newcastle, this isn't going to be your first final. You're going to have plenty more. You need to get over that Wembley curse, but you guys are incredible in the stadium today. You definitely did yourself proud, and it just wasn't your day. And you're going to learn from it. You're going to take this experience, but you're definitely going to win so many more trophies going forward. And don't worry, you will get, be back in the final. And man, I did enjoy it.